makes me smile to think about Lon's legacy because it's, it's so much more than even his work. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is Lon as a person. I don't know that it's something we can say much anymore to meet a gentleman, to meet someone who's debonair. Um, and I think Lon's generosity, humor, and curiosity are just part of the legacy that I really think about with Lon. His book, Marfa for the Perplexed, is simply an original, and it's an amazing way to, to look at this place where we live, Marfa, Texas. I think it's fantastic for us to have this literary landmark here. Because our population is sort of scant in terms of the um, per capita, you know, by area, not a tremendous amount of work, historical work, has been done, though a tremendous amount of culture has come from this place. Like, the traditions are very strong, but it's a place which people know about, but it's almost mythic to some extent, which is a kind of a problem because people know of its look, but they don't necessarily know of its voice. And I think that Lon sort of exists at this intersection. He's both documenting the history of these cultures, he's also producing the culture in its history. So I personally feel very, very proud of that fact. And Lon is a guy that many, many people in our community did know of. I think that people feel proud of that. And they're excited that, that people are interested, to be honest. You know that people are interested and, and see beauty and significance in their cultural traditions. I mean, I certainly feel that way. The company that we keep that gives life a good deal of its purpose. For some people, I imagine it's one's family that makes up that company. For others, it isn't or can't be. One especially beautiful thing that I will cherish about Lon is that he made community wherever he was, and his circle included so many different people, those of a gregarious and not so gregarious nature. Another thing to note is that pretty much all of them had very strong points of view and something to contribute. I met and learned about many wonderful people in Lon and Didi's company. But some part of that wonder is due to meeting or learning about them with Lon and Didi. They remind us that our lives, and in particular, our friendships are to be cherished. There is a well-known, though infrequently mentioned, reason for making books. It is the fact that they give us the opportunity to spend more time with the author, to become somehow closer with them. Reading their books will do this too, of course, and the brevity of life is another reason for publishing them. I hope this literary landmark, which is the consequence of much work by the Friends of the Library, will give readers of this and future generations the chance to know our dear friend, Lon Taylor. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. Lon would be mortified. <laughs> and his parents would be over the moon. We read to each other and with each other. It was a joy to live with him, and it was a, he was a joy to know. And that you all knew something about him, is that he was eternally curious. So in the early 90s, he was invited to the Center for Big Band Studies for their annual conference and gave a paper. And it was October, and he called me from the drugstore, from the payphone of the drugstore and said, Dee Dee, sell the apartment, quit your job, let's move out here. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the next May, we came down and spent three weeks in the Big Band. We stayed at the Gage, we stayed in the Chisto Station, even stayed in Presidio. <laughs> and after those three weeks, we knew that we loved Fort Davis best. Fort Davis was the eld oldest of the towns, the most historic, and felt the most real. And I love the fact that you all knew and loved Lon. Some of you I don't even know myself. But Lon was lovable, so thank you.